Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Um, Talafalava, my name is Brianna Fruin. I'm from Samoa, but currently living in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm a part of the Pacific Climate Warriors a team here in Glasgow, and we're calling in from, from COP26 at the moment, and excited to, to be a part of this Talanoa, and I think um, I'm most looking forward to hearing about what's happening in our groups outside of Glasgow, because COP has been very intense, and sometimes we get tunnel vision in, into the, the um, space that we're currently in, um, that we forget to look out and check what's happening within our, our wider community, and so I'm excited to see that all today. I will pass it on to Alisi. Thank you, Bibi. Bulavinaka, my name is Alisi. I'm from um, Bua province in Bonolevo uh, in Fiji. And I'm currently calling in from Nandi. The weather is just so beautiful out here. I'm just sitting outside enjoying it. And I'm really excited for this Talanoa today. Um, you know, been doing it for a few years now, this whole journey and um, every time we come into this space I always like to think about how it's important to connect the dots and it's important for us to be visible. Um, so excited for our team in Glasgow wrapping the rest of us out there because not many people can make it because of COVID but at the same time we're out here just you know make sure making sure that we have actions on the ground and then getting it showcased out there and for this talent I'm just excited about making that connection between all the hard work that was put into the Youth for Pacific event, a gathering that was virtual because we couldn't meet in person, getting all those messages together, taking it across to Glasgow, and you know, also the actions and making the connections of why this work is important um, and why we continue to do this. Yeah, uh, that's me, and I'll, I'll pass it on to Jay. Thanks, Alicia. Um, hi, everyone. So my name is Jacinta. Um, known as Jay, and I'm calling in from Wathran Country, which is out um, down in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to also hear about um, the journey of our team at COP um, and just get like a really cool, like zooming out perspective of all our work together and as well as just hanging out with everyone. I will throw it to Wilfred. Thanks, Jay. I'm Wilfred, calling in from uh, Suva, Fiji, um, and I am super excited to just be here and see everybody uh, and uh, hear and share all the all the different pieces of work that's happened so far. Uh, yeah, some hangout session time. And I'll pass it to Joe. Thanks, Wilfred. Hi everyone, my name is Joe. I'm calling in from uh, the Easy Hotel on One Hill Street in Glasgow. That's where we're based. Um, I'm really excited for this call for a few different reasons. Firstly, I guess is to connect with everybody back at home because I feel like it's been a while since we've seen each other and I'm really excited just to be in the same space with everybody. I'm also really excited to uh, celebrate some of the things that have happened over these last few weeks, so many incredible milestones have been hit. And um, it's great to take a, just take a step out and celebrate all those things. And um, I think the last celebration that I want to have is like a celebration of faith because we went into this whole entire project, even before we landed in Glasgow, before we even started all of this, even before we had even begun planning Youth for Pacific with a prayer and so many things have been answered over these last few weeks and uh, I'm really excited just to to rejoice in the fruits of our faith and because some incredible things have come and so I really appreciate all of that stuff and looking forward to hearing from everybody and passing back to Lomit. Thank you, Joe. Um, I am going to pass it back to the other half of our favorite MCs. J. 
Jay? Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that, uh, guys. And really great to have you all um, join us, uh, especially uh, from the space, uh, place and time that you're calling in from. Uh, yeah, and it's such an amazing thing just to come together and uh, connect uh, what's happened uh, prior to COP and during the week of COP. Um, so I think we, sorry, we have Alisi with us who will be speaking to us about what's happened prior to COP and um, to share about the Youth for Pacific uh, pre-COP gathering. Um, Alisi, can you hear me? How are you doing? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You're loud and clear. Okay. Go ahead. And I, I, yeah, and I know that there was like over 600 uh, young people that uh, joined the Youth for Pacific Gathering and came and they came together to formulate the, the Youth for Pacific Declaration as well. Um, why was it essential to have um, the Youth for Pacific Pre-COP Gathering? Well, you know, since since COVID hit and there were global lockdowns and, and the whole world came to standstill, I mean, we all know that part of the story, right? Like, how do we connect? How do we continue to engage? How do we continue to be visible? And as, uh, you know, COP uh, was coming up, we realized that we need to be present. We've always known that, but it was going to be a major hurdle because of uh, borders closed, more restrictions on travel, more costly than usual to travel. And, and uh, yeah, and as far as I understand, this Youth for Pacific Gathering was really trying to ensure that we had a space to come together uh, to, uh, to speak and to share and to put together something to take to Glasgow, even though we couldn't be there physically, even though we couldn't be present. And, and it was so exciting. I mean, there were like um, over 600 registered participants, as you mentioned, um, over 33 countries. And uh, the, the program uh, was six thematic sessions that were done. And uh, there were 12 workshops uh, within those. And then there were also Pacific artists that were highlighted um, throughout uh, the two-day workshop. And, and I think it was just such a, a beautiful way for us to come and gather and speak uh, about things that were important. And those thematic sessions or plenaries or talanoas, as we call them, you know, covered very pertinent uh, subjects around um, uh, clean energy, uh, transportation, nature-based solutions, ocean health and sustainability, loss and damage, climate finance, and I haven't counted, I'm not sure if I've mentioned all of them, but those were, you know, the subjects that were discussed in these plenaries. And we had experts who came in, and not only experts, but also youth experts in those space who are learning about it. And so it was a great way to also show the, the knowledge and the experience from young people in the Pacific to come and speak together on this. And I really enjoyed as well the innovation around the whole um, process, you know, having to use technology, having to use all these different platforms in order to engage. And um, there were these 12 workshop sessions that were done, and it was with partner organizations who work with youth in their countries and who also share the vision of uh, 350 Pacific and the Pacific Climate Warriors of wanting um, a just inclusive um, and trans uh, transition into you know a new a different world that's fossil fuel free and out of that came the the declaration yeah and it was amazing you know because mm -hmm. one of the things that usually happens in these cop spaces is that it comes down to text right it comes down to words what words do you use the important words to say the language of the cop speak in those spaces and we had in that final session where there was a document that you could just um use online and then people were like discussing the text to use to come up with what our key demands would be what would be in our declaration and we had those seven key demands that came up and uh, yeah, it was such an exciting process. And I was, I'm, I'm very uh, proud and honored to be part of that. And I'm so excited as well that, you know, the, the team that went to Glasgow has, has taken that with them. And, you know, they're taking our voices, our hopes, our demands um, into this uh, 26 COP. Maybe I'll just pause there. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you, Lucy, for sharing that. And uh, yeah, the innovation that's come uh, in pulling the gathering together, especially with the pandemic that uh, the globe is facing. Huh? Uh, and thank you for sharing those. Uh, maybe if you can share it with us, like what were some of the highlights from the gathering for you? Oh my goodness. Highlight. Oh my goodness. There were, there were so many. Uh, personal highlights I could add on. I mean, I've talked so much about the event itself. I really enjoyed how the space also and how this movement, our movement also celebrates our art and culture and creativity and music. And when we were spotlighting uh, artists from right across, you know, uh, Pacifica, it was beautiful. Uh, I also, you know, it was like a chance to hear from all these different artists because I don't know, just like it, it, we don't usually take the time to steer ourselves away from mainstream music, for me at least, and listen to, you know, intentionally listen to our Pacific Island artists and musicians. And it was just so beautiful and it just got me into this whole new vibe and space where I'm like looking for Pacific artists and listening to their music more and being intentional about how I recognize and celebrate them because their messages as well relate very well to our messages of resilience and pride in our countries and you know the beauty of our countries and how yeah and how we also have a place here and so that's that's that well that's maybe a personal highlight i'd like to share thank you so much and uh speaking of artists back by popular demand uh we do have nabsy lined up uh for uh for us uh, on the call today, so yeah, nice. um, <laughs> it'd be good to feature, feature the artists that performed at the uh, gathering as well. Uh, thank you so much for sharing with us, Alice, and uh, yeah, that's such an, a great way to mobilize and engage young people, uh, Pacific people, um, to not who not only came together to co-create uh, the Pacific Declaration on Climate Change, uh, but also to share the aspiration and demands for true climate climate leadership. Uh, and yes. thank you so much for, for sharing the, the amazing work that went uh, into creating the declaration uh, prior to COP. Uh, and as you mentioned, we do have a team on the ground uh, in Glasgow uh, that have taken the declaration with them. And, uh, and it'll be good to hear, hear from them as well. Um, Lome? Thank you, Alessi, again um, for sharing. So yes, G, the Youth for Pacific Declaration has traveled with us um, all the way to Glasgow. And uh, to speak more on this, uh, we have Brianna and Joe, um, who are obviously our Pacific Climate Warriors um, on the ground at COP26. Um, so I would like to ask you both um, a few questions, if that's OK. Um, and I'll start with Brianna. Baby? Okay, alrighty. Um, so what was the journey to the UK like? And um, tell us, would, would you be able to tell us about some of the actions that the team have been a part of? Yes, um, thank you, Lome. The, the journey to the UK wasn't an easy one. Um, because of COVID, there were so many things that we need to get needed to get in line in order to come. So. Um, from different types of tests to medical clearance to being able to just transit through different countries. We needed all sorts of clearance. And so it was definitely a, a hard journey over, but it was one that was um, important to us because like we've said on this call already, we were bringing the voices from the Pacific. We were bringing with us the declaration that so many people put their, their hearts and their minds into during the Youth for Pacific gathering online. And so um, everything that, all the chaos that, that happened in the airports and on the travel was worth it because we knew we were, we were a part of something bigger. Um, and, and that's really, why we're here today in Glasgow. And um, I would love to hear from Joe, his perspective as well. <laughs> time is still catching up with me, the time differences. Um, it, it's been an incredible journey to get here. 
Um, even before we landed in Glasgow, there was so much work that had done to and that had already been done to amplify the youth for Pacific as much as we could before we even got here. And we knew our job on the ground was to make sure that we can bring as much attention to it as possible, especially with the understanding that we knew the Pacific delegation within COP this year would be small already. And so uh, we've been working really hard to, to try and bring as much visibility to it as possible. But we also knew coming into, into the UK, we'd have an opportunity to be able to um, visit some of the places that we've been campaigning against for some of the longest time and bring the voices of the Pacific into those two. And so uh, when we got to London last week, we joined some actions around Lloyds of London, the Bank of England, Standard Charter, financial institutions that have invested in the structure, invested into the, the expansion of the fossil fuel industry. And so we took our message and we took the voices of our youth into those spaces. But we've also used our Youth for Pacific Declaration in, in anything that we've spoken to, to ensure that we can center our voices, let's center our work here around those. And I guess one of the most uplifting things um, when you're stuck in the middle of this freezing cold and you're tired trying to get off jet lag is seeing the incredible workflow in from home, knowing that we're here, but we know we're not alone, knowing that if ever we needed a reminder of who we're serving, we just have to switch online and search the hashtag have your say and then see that everybody all over the world and all over the Pacific were taking part in this incredible action to help unify our voices and to help amplify those. And so uh, we've just been trying to do lots of different little things around here and around town. And um, I'll let Brianna speak to what just happened this evening in terms of um, our, our declaration. But uh, probably the highlight for me was this morning, uh, we knew, so it's still Thursday here. And so Youth Empowerment Day is on Friday, which is our tomorrow. And so today um, we knew we had, uh, try to do as much as we could to try and bring attention to the declaration and to try and uh, get as many signatures as possible. Uh, the team came up with the idea that we should busk for the Youthful Pacific Declaration. And so we took up some space inside the foyer of the uh, convention center and Mac was on his guitar and then Brianna when one and Salome danced and we had also uh, had the declaration on a Q code when one had created a QR code for our declaration. And so somebody would dance, people would be standing around and watching and then show them a QR code and then they'd bring it up on their phone and sign the declaration, which is really great. If you want to have a watch at some of that, it's on our Instagram. Um, and lots of people came up and had lots of conversations around those. And one really important person noted us while we were stood there and that's the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, Henry Puna, and we were stood there and he came over and he said hi and um, yeah, some really incredible things began from that conversation, but we were able to bring you full Pacific into that space. And so it's been, this whole journey has really been blessed and we know it's because we've been carrying the voice of the entire region. And had we not had that blessing from everybody, I don't think things would have turned out the way they have. And um, we did have some really exciting things come up this evening and, uh, Brianna led us through that and maybe if Dewey, is it okay if she can give us a bit of an overview of what we just went through this evening? Thank you, Joe. Um, so yes, this evening we were able to attend a meeting by the Pacific Island Forum that was hosted by them and uh, in attendance were Pacific Island leaders, including the Prime Minister of Fiji, um, the Secretary General of the PIFS itself, uh, Henry Puna. We had a minister from Norway attend, also the SG from the Commonwealth in attendance. So we had some really great world leaders um, in this space and we were given a little bit of a time slot within their program to present our declaration and we did so in a, um, I guess, out of the box way, um, Salome, our hostess of the mostest, um, and Moi Moana uh, performed the Siva Samoa. And then after that, um, Moi also performed the Nifo Oti dance. Um, and it was really just our 
to show our appreciation for our world leaders, um, for our Pacific leaders in particular. And I think we just really wanted to tell this story of, of how there's, um, I guess a little bit of mislanguaging around how our elders and world leaders have failed us. And I think that that languaging needs to be more specific to the global North leaders have failed us because our Pacific leaders have not failed us. We stand on the backs of them because they, they are giants and they've paved the way many of us to be here and you know we think back to the Paris Agreement and having 1.5 in the Paris Agreement and the first person that comes to my mind is um the late Tony de Broom and and the the amount of work that he as an elder has done not just for Micronesia but for the world um he was a world leader and an elder that that succeeded in so many ways and and paved the way for us in so many ways and he, leaders like him never failed us. And so that, that's really the, the message we, we wanted to give to our Pacific leaders is that we recognize their leadership, we recognize their hard work and, and the work that we get to do through Youth for the Pacific, um, if through the, the online gatherings we have, through the, the campaigning work that we're doing in the islands and within the diaspora, is just to, to further push that torch that they've already lit. Um, and so we were able to present the declaration with um, the says that if you go on our Instagram, you can see um, the leaders wearing our says in their ears with um, Youth for Pacific on it. And it was it was our intergenerational way to make that connection. And um, if anything, just to um, say too low to them and a big fat malo to them for the, the work that they do that we hope to continue to do in our region. Thank you so much, Bibi. Um, thank you, Joe, for sharing some of the things that we've been um, doing on the ground here. Um, it's been such an amazing experience, especially, um, you know, it for uh, those of us who have, like this is our first um, experience of COP. Um, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. Um, as you can see, I have been yawning. The time difference <laughs> is, is a big killer, um, but it's all worth it. Um, so we have one more week at COP26. Um, so keep an eye out for our team, um, for your team of the Pacific Climate Warriors, uh, which includes Mac, Moi Moana, Joe, Bibi, and myself. Um, Thank you, Lomi. Um, something just popped up uh, while uh, Bibi was sharing about, um, yeah, some of the experiences at COP. Uh, Tony de Broom came out of uh, what you mentioned. And um, yeah, I'd just like to ask, like, if Joe would like to share, like, I know this isn't some for some like for Joe, it's not the first cop he's been to. And like some of the amazing work that's gone back like into uh the the Suva Declaration back in uh COP twenty before COP twenty one and then moving into COP twenty three when the waters were present. So maybe Joe, you'd like to share some insights into that. You know, our involvement in COP has been uh, different. And I think there are some ways that are really obvious and visible, and there are some ways that have not been so obvious and visible. And I think it's important to visibilize all of it. The policy angle for us has um, always been a part that we've held within the COP space, uh, within our declarations, but it's not something that you visibilize in a really big way the way you mobilize around something and mobilizing around uh declarations is only something that we started doing when we had have your say but before have your say when we before went into paris um our work really was around uh trying to get our languaging into those declarations like the silver declaration the Morsby declaration uh at a grassroots level ensuring that our voices will be heard in there and it was really around a lot of conversations within our um 
our CSO groups and within our networks trying to push those. And I think Jenny on this call too, who has played a big role in that and trying to push for those pieces or for our voices to end up in those spaces. And they have one of the big things that I remember about COP23 is that one day we were sat there having lunch and I think everybody was just sat with exhaustion because we had been through a whole week of mobilization. Uh, we were trying to amplify, have your say at that point for the Pacific Climate Warrior Declaration on Climate Change. And everybody was exhausted and we were sat there having lunch around the table. And then this woman walked up to us and she said, thank you. And she said she was really happy that we were there and we turned around. It ended up being um, Dame Meg Taylor, who at that time was the Secretary General of the Pacific Island Forum. And she said something then that has always stuck with me and that she, she wished she could be outside with us, but her job was on the inside because she knew we would be out there on the outside. And I think that's such an important thing for us to carry forward and something I've always thought about. And I especially thought about it today a lot when we were sat there with Henry Putnam and having lunch with him is that we all have a role to play in COP, whether we're inside, whether we're outside, whether we're at home, there is something that we can do. The important part is that we're all doing the same thing together, that we are all saying the same thing, that we're all singing the same song, that as a region we are united. And Knowing our role in that is really great. And it's there is no role more important than the other. And we all have to play a, a different part in that. And there's times and we happen to be here at this moment, but a whole entire network has also been here from home, online, mobilizing in some incredibly beautiful and powerful ways that have added so much color and richness and creativity and voice to the Youthful Pacific Declaration and to have your say itself. And, it's made it a success and a beautiful representation of who the youth are today because of it. And I think we have to continue to do this, work with our leaders, understand that our role is at COP, we are here, but we understand that our role is not as negotiators or not as government officials. Our role here is as representation of grassroots voices and grassroots people. And our job here is just to amplify things in a way that has made sense to us. And so that's what we've really been trying to do. And um, I think, yeah, today was a real full circle moment for us to have come from um, a space where we were sat there having lunch a few years ago and just the secretary general that time tapping us on the shoulder just to give her word of affirmation and praise to today being sat there and having lunch with the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum has been incredible for us. And so uh, it just goes to show how much work has gone into the youth movement in the Pacific over these last few years to build us up to the point where we are now being sat at the table with our leaders, talking to our leaders about Youthful Pacific and bringing the youth voice into that. And so a big congratulations to everybody on the incredible work that's happened, not just today, but every day in the lead up to today, because everything has happened for us to be able to make this space, to be able to be where we're at today. And so that's really incredible. I didn't even have to answer the question. More than perfect. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, uh, thank you as well, Bibi, uh, for sharing stories uh, from uh, Glasgow. Um, yeah, and something that uh, Joe mentioned about the actions that happen outside of COP and in the negotiation rooms uh, are very important. And I think that's a good segue into our next part where we get to hear of the amazing uh, work that's been happening uh, in the islands and, and in our diaspora community in Australia, New Zealand, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Portland in the US. Um, so with us to share about the amazing work that's happening on the ground here in the islands and diaspora community is, uh, we have Jay and Wilfred. Uh, to share with us about the Have You See campaign and uh, what's happening here back home, uh, what's happening back home. So uh, maybe Jacinta, you look ready to go. <laughs> uh, can you share about the Have You See campaign and uh, yeah, why use the word the word say if you can explain a bit more about that, Unaka. Yeah, thanks, G. Um, yeah, the Have Your Say campaign, as shared like earlier by everyone in the team, it's this like plan of where we mobilize our communities 
uh, to uplift and reinforce the demands of our Pacific communities, being the Youth for Pacific Declaration. Um, say is uh, it, it is a Samoan word, uh, but it, there's similar variations of the word in like the Poly Polynesian language groups. Um, but it means flower that's worn behind the e, and um, yeah, it's just like being this really powerful symbol to represent. Uh, Pacific people and and Pacific resilience. Um, but yeah, the circumstances that we're in, you know, with COVID and all is definitely a challenge that we've had to overcome. Um, but we know it, it, has, it isn't the only barrier that's been in our way when it comes to this work. Um, yeah, this has been years in the making, you know, we've been labeled with this narrative that has painted us as, you know, the tiny guts on a map or the sinking islands, victims of climate change, um, you know, the history of colonizations, resources being extracted, all these things have been challenges and yet, um, you know, our journey has created this foundation that was built by those who like paved the way for us, you know, our elders, um, as well as um, the foundation being strengthened by the incredible work of our warriors and our communities. Um, but the campaign was designed to overcome these challenges as well as complement the work of our warriors at COP26. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's become this like symbol that represents our people. Um, that's where we get the safe flower. The campaign is about the seven day challenge and this was a pathway to center you know, our, our stories, you know, our frontline truths. Um, and so the week of actions have been dubbed as, like we've called it the seven day challenge for our network. And this is how we got the seven actions, seven days for the seven demands that are a part of the Youth for Pacific Declaration. Um, you know, we also produced an art kit to serve as a guide for each of these actions. Um, and then we you know, leverage the power of, so of social media, you know, using the tools that we know and know how to use uh, to share in real time the effects that climate change has on our communities, especially on the front lines. Um, yeah, the an action was set for each day, each of the seven days of the challenge series. Our Pacific Climate Warriors uh, in across the region were able to mobilize around any or all of these actions that worked within their means and their capacity. Um, yeah, which you know is what created this like really rich uh, content that we'll be able we were able to share throughout the week. Um, but yeah, Wilfred, I think um, you know we can share a glimpse of how our warriors across the region. You know, we've had teams in um, the Marshall Islands, Tonga, Kiribati. Um, Fiji, Samoa, as well as the diaspora, as Jean mentioned, um, yeah, who were able to organize digitally and tap into creativity, uh, share stories, and all of this just really helped empower the journey of the declaration getting to the um, to COP. So we can play that video.
Um, yeah, that was it. Uh, unless Wilfred, you had anything to add, but um, I'll pass it back to our MCs. Thank you for sharing that beautiful video, uh, Jay and Wolf. Uh, maybe Wolf, did you uh, want to share about uh, some of the social media handles that uh, our viewers can, uh, and some of the hashtags that they can uh, use? Sure. Yeah, um, that was just a little snippet of all the content that's been coming in and all the love that's been shared over on social media. Um, but definitely uh, there'll be more to come uh, on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, also on TikTok as well. Um, so if you're on Instagram, it's uh, at Pacific Climate Warriors. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, it's at 350 Pacific. And if it's on TikTok, if you're a TikToker, uh, it's at PCW's TikTok. Thanks, uh, Wilfred. I think we have some uh, TikTok influencers on uh, on call here today. Um, not going to name any of, of you, but uh, yeah, thanks for for sharing that, uh, Jay and uh, Wilfred. Um, yeah, and it's uh, it's always powerful to to witness a specific people um, that our journey to COP uh, and the intentions our warriors take with them uh, is for the survival of our Pacific people and island homes. Um, is something that the warrior is the, the Pacific climate warriors uh, continue to do. Um, and thank you so much uh, for that. And uh, Lome, I think we've come to the end of our time together. And, and, I, know, and I know that it's, it's, it's late for you guys on that side. Uh, so it'll be good to have some time to, to rest up uh, before you guys get back into it uh, uh, tomorrow for the youth engagement stuff. Huh? Yes, uh, whoever set this meeting up, very inconsiderate of you, but <laughs> but the show must go on. <laughs> um, I guess uh, maybe as a wrap up, if we could hear from our amazing speakers uh, once again. Um, this time I would like to ask you all the same question. Um, so the question is, what's one hope you have for this COP26? Um, and also if you had any final words for those listening in today. So I'm gonna start off with um, Bibi and then Bibi can pass it on. Thanks, Lome. Um, I think my hope for COP26 is that it's that it's that push that we need forward. I think where we're we're very far behind in our global journey to cut emissions and to finally get into that transition to renewables and to cleaner energy and a more sustainable planet. And so I hope COP is able to, I hope I'm using the right English word, catapult us forward, um, you know, kuleya uh, kuiluma, where, where English fills me, Samoan always helps me. Um, and I feel like if we're able to get that COP, that COP push, we can then continue this work outside of COP um, because we're not gonna solve the climate crisis in two weeks. The work has to continue. And I have complete faith in our young Pacific people, like the young Pacific people who put together the Youth for Pacific Declaration, because the people who came forward for this, they already do this work. Everything that's in this document is work that young Pacific people are already doing in the islands. They just need that, that um, like I said, like that push from world leaders. And so that's my hope for COP is that it can give us momentum, but also acknowledging that we will also be doing the work and continue this work after COP. And I'll pass it on to Alisi. I think you've covered all of it, Bibi. <laughs> you've articulated all of our hopes so well. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same for me. It's like every year we have to meet again for a conference of parties. It's like, how much longer does it have to go on? It's 26 years now of this conversation. How much more evidence do you need? how much more scientific data, how many more stories, how many more islands have to disappear, how many more homes have to be gone and destroyed, you know, in, before this happens. And, you know, for us, the answer is no more. We don't want any more of that to happen. We want it to stop. 
and and these are the ways that we are working towards that and i love what joe had said earlier about how there are different ways that you show up not everyone's in the negotiation room there are people outside there are people in the communities there are people negotiating text you know uh policy we're all working in different places and then in different ways and really like our seven demands really articulate all of that that's the outcomes we want we want net zero we want a just transition we want to keep fossil fuels in the ground and to invest in sustainable ways of living and being and there's always a lot of flack and criticism when we demand these things and they're like well you're using technology right now you're doing this and that but but the reason we're doing that is because they have seen that it is worth investing in and it is what is available to us so we have the ability to recalibrate, to reset our course and find new means and new ways of working and being technologically, transport, everything. And we have the ability to do that. And that's what we're fighting for. Um, yeah, and I guess I'll pass it on to, who should I pass it on to? Is it Wilfred? Have you gone yet? <laughs> sure, thanks, Alicia. Uh, like, um, what's one hope? I'm hoping with all the Pacific power that's been generated the past uh, week or so and just leading up to uh, where we are today, um, there's some real um, climate leadership from global leaders and taking things uh, out that, yeah, more seriously. And just like with all the news that we've been having on the IPCC reports and, and all what's forecast for um, the future of our islands, there's some really meaningful changes that come about. Uh, in this call, so yeah, that, and I'll pass it to Jay. Thanks, Wolf. Um, yeah, good question. Also, a good start to have BB open this up because I think, um, yeah, BB is always so good at this stuff, like articulating um, all our thoughts. Um, but I will also add that, like, I hope, like, you know, in Australia, like, our government is ugh, so gross but um that like this work is enough to like spark um you know just a, a big push and like to sort of like be like an example of how we can like use the power of our like communities to like influence and be a part of like decision making processes because uh, like we've done all of these things and um yeah it's just like been the obvious thing that a lot of governments like don't do uh, really well at. Um, and I'll also say that I hope, um, yeah, art ha has a big role in uh, the future of our work. I mean, it, it really does in the Pacific Climate Warriors Network, but um, yeah, I'd like it to see a bit more front and center because I'm a big fan of like including more ways to bring more creativity to like the way we, we respond to these crises. Um, I will throw it to um, Joe. Have you gone? Thank you. Um, what was the question again? What's a one hope from COP twenty six? And and also any final words uh, for those listening in today? Ah, um, my one hope from COP twenty six is actually some. Some really great commitments have been made over these last few days. Um, we came out of the Leader Summit with some strong commitments and also the High Ambition Coalition uh, brought out a really strong statement with our leaders and the US signed back up to that. So the groundwork is there. It, it's there. Um, we have our declaration, we have our demands. And just because today it was delivered to our leaders, doesn't mean that we can stop advocating for it, doesn't mean that we can stop amplifying it, doesn't mean that we have to stop uh, gaining signatures for it because today is just the starting point. Our delivery to our leaders today was just symbolic of that, presenting our voice out of respect to the people who are carrying that within the negotiation space. Our job now is to continue to mobilize around it and to use it as the tools that we need in order to continue to advocate for what they are advocating for inside there. And so, um, we, it's like exactly what Alice and Brianna have been talking about. We have set the bar for ourselves and now it's time to do the real work to hold our leaders to account to what we're asking for. And our demands have been clear. And so we have to continue now to 
uh, to continue to push for those. And so I am excited to see what we can do with this. And I guess in terms of final words is that this is where the work begins. And we have some incredible things coming up even in this next few days for us, Youth Empowerment Day begins tomorrow morning, but then also it's a global day of action against climate justice, which we are calling Have Your Say Day on Saturday. And we have to do everything we can um, in order to continue this fire burning, this fire that our leaders have started because the few of them who have made it to COP have done an incredible job to, to put the Pacific on the agenda, to put adaptation onto the agenda, to put conversations around doubling ambitions onto the agenda and our job is to take that forward, to take that forward in whatever way we can now and to continue to fly that flower, to continue to burn that fire, to continue to stand up for our islands. And so my hope is that we continue to push our youthful Pacific demands until we get exactly what it is that we've been asking for. And I think that will come out of COP because just seeing what we've been able to achieve in this short amount of time is, has been incredible. Um, and I'm passing on to whoever has not gone yet. Well, I'm sorry to say, but everyone has gone. <laughs> so <laughs> I will pass it over to the best um, hostess of the mostest, G, Uncle G. Thanks, Lomi. Thank you all for sharing those, uh, the, your hopes and, and those final words. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that because uh, I think all of you spoke to to that beautifully, uh, and and I just like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all our viewers um, uh, who's joining us uh, on the Gigabox platform uh, on the Pacific Resilience Hub uh, uh, page, and also our uh, those who are joining us on the Zoom call. Uh, we have a few of our own warriors here. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we would like to wish you all the best and please do get some rest. I see Lome yawning. Uh, yeah, and it's only week one Lome, uh, but it, it, yeah. Just want to wish you guys all the best and please do get some rest. Uh, you got a big day again tomorrow. So we uh, and uh, Lome, by popular demand, yeah? Back by popular demand. Always back by popular demand. And this will always be my favorite um so wilfred um if you will play still the one yo 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 what's up no 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 this is now say since you play and this is kb4 no no production no 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 yo this is now say since you play looks like we made it look how far we come my baby we might have took the long way We knew we'd keep there someday They say, I bet that we'll never make it But there's a look at us holding on We're still together, still going strong
Thanks, everyone. Come off mute and say bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye.